Yo, what's good everyone? This is AEO Boxing with Madiba, and we're here to talk about why Mark Maceo is the only hope for Filipino boxing. So yesterday, Mark Maceo defeated Eduardo Ramirez in a unanimous decision on a non-pay-per-view portion of the undercard, and it was a decent performance, nothing too special or noteworthy to take away. I did see some improvements by Maceo though. Mark seemed more patient, he's not constantly bouncing around like what he used to do, he's more flat-footed which is good for him because constantly moving around like what he used to do expended a lot of energy and caused him to gas out. He's still fast, explosive, powerful, and awkward. His counter-punching strategy also seemed to improve. He used a high guard trap to draw his opponent's punches, which gave Mark opportunities to counter. He was able to drop and hurt Ramirez several times by doing this. But Mark still has problems that he never fixed like overcommitting and loading up with all his punches, lunging in when he attacks, throwing wild and wide punches, and being repetitive, but most importantly, Mark still does not have a jab, which makes no sense to me whatsoever. If Mark had a jab, especially an intelligent jab, he could have knocked out Ramirez. I don't know what's wrong with this current generation of Filipino boxers, but none of them use the jab. It's like they all just want to copy Manny Pacquiao, but Pacquiao had a jab, but they don't want to copy that. But that's besides the point. Mark won his second fight at 130 and is the WBA Intercontinental Champion. He's ranked 6th in the WBA rankings and is in a good position as a contender to challenge for the title within the next year or so. This makes Mark Masayo the only hope for Filipino boxing at the current moment. Filipino boxing had a mini golden age in the late 2010s going into the 2020s. There were several champions in the lower weight classes, along with many top contenders and prospects. There was no clear successor for the next face of Filipino boxing after Manny Pacquiao, but the future looked promising. However, in the last two years, Filipino boxing has been on a decline and is in a championship drought. Marlon Tapales, Jeron Ancajas, Nonito Donaire, Donnie Netes, John Rio Casimiro, Melvin Jerusalem and Mark Masayo were all champions that lost. Furthermore, most of the top Filipino contenders and prospects lost. Because of all these losses, there's no standout Filipino boxer to lead the pack. And other than Demler Zamora, a half black, half Filipino American boxer, there's no next big Filipino star in boxing in the foreseeable future. And this is where Mark Masayo enters the conversation. Mark had a lot of hype in 2021 and 2022. He seemed to be the favorite Filipino prospect on many Pacquiao promotions and by the PBC because he was promoted and given a lot of opportunities. This included fighting on Manny Pacquiao versus Yerdenis Ugas undercard and getting a title shot right after against Gary Russell Jr. It was clear as day that he was supposed to be the next Filipino star. He has entertaining style, gets knockouts, has the humble backstory, has the looks, and most importantly, he's young. But his momentum stopped when he lost to Ray Vargas in the summer of 2022, and then his hype train was derailed entirely when he lost to Brandon Figueroa in 2023. It looked like he was put on the shelf by the PBC and was forced to take a small fight on a small card in late 2023. But his fight against Eduardo Ramirez shows that the PBC and many Pacquiao promotions still has faith in making Mark a star. They put him on the undercard of a tank fight. Even if it was a non-pay-per-view portion of the fight, that's still a big deal. Not only are you exposed to a wider audience, but that means the promoter sees value in you and has interest in promoting you. These non-pay-per-view undercard fighters usually find their way onto main cards. So Mark Masayo is the second chance at becoming a champion and then the next face of Filipino boxing. He's the only hope of ushering in a new era of Filipino boxing. However, his biggest issue is the competition at 130. Currently, there's no clear number one or superstar at 130, but there's a lot of good fighters and talent there. Current champions like Oshaki Foster, Lamont Roach, Emmanuel Navarrete. Then you have contenders like Albert Bell, Zelfa Barrett, Abraham Nova, Oscar Valdez, Robinson Casesiao, Hector Garcia, and then you have featherweights who moved up like Raymond Ford and Lee Wood. A lot of good fighters that are all capable of beating Mark. So it will fall on Sean Gibbons to carefully manage and match make Mark. They will move him through the WBA rankings for a title shot against Lamont Roach. 
My advice, even though it doesn't really matter, is to keep Mark away from any softballs and guys that can box and move. Somebody like Ray Ford would be a horrible matchup. Hopefully, we see Mark in the ring later this year. Maybe he'll fight Heather Garcia, as he is an easier fight for Mark's style. But who knows, this is boxing. Anything can happen. But thank you for tuning in with AEO Boxing from Diba. Like, subscribe, and more content is coming your way.